current policy, the outdoor cafe can only abide in the restaurant. Now we we extend the cafe can go away from the main restaurant, and some of them uh, another portion can be on the roadway. So that's a major change. Um, uh, we hear a lot from internally and uh, some comments from uh, the public, and I think the policy is. Uh, uh, too ready for commission to take action. If there are any comments, we'll be more than happy to to, um, to entertain. Work on this. I think there are some members of the public, uh, Wendy Landman, who would like to uh, speak on behalf of Walk Boston uh, related to this. Great. Thank. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak. Um, so I have written down the comments I'm going to give you. So I'll bring them up to you. Um, so, uh, and we're happy to meet with PIC and whoever else uh, in the city makes sense to discuss our comments. So first, we're pleased that the regulations uh, will allow alcohol to be served on the far side of the sidewalk. We think that's a good change for the liveliness of the city, and so we're pleased to see that that's there. We also um, think it's a good idea to allow the expansion onto curb and street areas. Again, this creates some new opportunities and follows along some of the new policies around parklets. Um, and other changes to the way that we use the streets and sidewalk that we think are a good idea. But we do have a number of comments about the, the guidelines themselves. The first two are, are sort of technical issues. Um, 2F should refer to the seating located within the restaurant's property and not only that located on the city's sidewalks because that takes into account the net need to maintain adequate walking distance and so on. Um, Technical issue uh, num uh, number 14 should say planters and their contents uh, because a lot of cafes have plant material that is very wide and even up to a foot beyond the edge of the planter and it actually takes up the walking area. Much as we ask people uh, to trim their hedges when they're hanging over the sidewalks, we need to take that into account for the regulations. Um, we suggest that the regulations provide a simple table that indicates which department is responsible for different elements of the regulations. It might clarify that there are still many of them and um, maybe spur the city to simplify the process so that there aren't quite so many different bodies involved in this. Um, the minimum dimension for the path of travel should be four feet. We prefer that the minimum is six feet, exclusive of street furniture and any other obstructions. I mean, I'm sorry, the regulations state that it should be four feet. We believe the minimum should be five feet unless there are extraordinary circumstances. And our understanding is that the Disability Commission has stated in the past that they think that it should be five feet. So we were confused that four feet showed up here. Um, the city should establish a minimum sidewalk dimension to allow any cafes, so at least X feet to ensure that there's an adequate path of travel plus dimensions for the cafe itself. And I think the city, we think the city should make that determination before issuing the guidelines. Right now it says 50%, but um, if you have a busy sidewalk and it's 10 feet wide, that probably does not actually allow for a cafe with the, the dimensions that are required. Um, we would like the city to look at modifying the rule that the cafe should not occupy more than 50% of the sidewalk because that may not be appropriate for very wide sidewalks where we could imagine that you could have more than 50% and still have lots of sidewalk, um, but it may be insufficient for narrow sidewalks. Again, uh, sort of that refers back to this, same, this issue of the minimum path of travel. Um, we believe that there should be a requirement of a minimum of 15 business days of notice for review by the public and require that the plans be available electronically so that upon request they can be reviewed by the public, much as the, the way that the BPDA now does it. Um, I will say that when we've tried to find this in the past, it's really complicated and there's not much notice when a cafe is going to appear and there's certainly not a drawing, so it's hard to see. Um, the cafe must be removed from the sidewalk when not in continuous use. Um, the season can extend beyond May to September. In fact, we're happy to see some cafes providing heating because we think that extends the life of the city. But we believe the regulations should say something about removing all the cafe equipment and furniture if it's not in use for more than 10 days, for example. Um, obviously, sometimes a proprietor goes on vacation, so you don't want to make it just a day, but just letting it, the stuff sit there um, shouldn't be allowed. 
We believe that there should be a set of a schedule for fees and permitting costs they could be based on size, location, restaurant revenues, et cetera, but it should be transparent. The way the guidelines are written right now, it seems to be at the whim of the PIC. Not that you guys are necessarily whimsical, but there sh it should be a transparent uh, set of guidelines. Uh, we believe there should be opportunities for pop-up cafes for short-term use, sort of the one to five day um, that goes along with uh, festivals or special events in the city. And finally, we think it's really important to set a schedule and program for enforcement, including a point person ref to respond to public complaints when cafes are not following the rules. And we have attached a photo of a cafe, not named, but in the South End, where there have been public complaints. They shifted slightly, but really, the walking area is not adequate, and the walking area is entirely in the brick trim area. Um, you can see the plants are overhanging. In other words, we, we hear a lot of, um, from the public, Walk Boston hears from the public when cafes are not following the rules and there's really no good system for getting them to follow the rules. So um, th those are our comments. You, whoops, excuse me, I'll give you copies of them and happy to answer any questions if any of you have any questions. Comments, um, I don't know if there's questions are, uh, from other commission members, but it also has a number of things in there which I think we can look to do over the next two weeks to uh, put into the, uh, these proposed guidelines. There's some that may take a little bit longer, um, and some which I think things like enforcement, which may have been previously addressed so in the LMI a, process. A couple of things that were addressed by you will actually fall into the checklist that we yes. provide to people, so like that's what's gonna bring okay. clarity to how to come through the process. This is just the policy that will support our yes. new checklist. So we hope to make the okay. process clear through that. I think that your comments about the path of travel are consistent with our current things. We are at a five foot minimum and we grow to eight feet in certain sections. So that's great. That's so the, and the fifty percent thing was just to kind of take up the slop in the areas where we don't okay. have because this seems to say four in some our, places. I, I, I'm not sure where it says four, but it should say five. Okay. Um, Thank you. And I think that the enforcement thing was a big aspect of what we were looking to get yes. for from this policy and we've been working with code enforcement on what the standard um, application, you know, like how you would engage uh, with the complaint and both how they would rectify That's that great. complaint with the city. Also, if you ever need cafe plans, we do advertise in the paper. I know that's not the easiest thing. We can get you on our list for the PIC hearings, but you can always come and get these plans from us. And we have two weeks between our new business and our public hearings, where, which you can view those plans or all the documentation. Okay, so I know you guys have been great when we ask for something specific, um, but I think they should be online, the way that BBDA... We're, we're trying to get there, that's, that's a, a, a broader kind of yeah. thing, but yeah, we'd like everything to be available. And, and the other thing, which I didn't say, is we only got these yesterday. So the fact that there's a hearing today was disturbing from a public process standpoint, because so, yeah, we've we, been asking we, for we've them. Been having, we, we made them publicly available for the past week. A couple of you guys had just managed, had asked for it prior to our, our week Okay, so thank you. I appreciate getting reached out to, but again, that sort of the lag and the, you know, I know that you're working yeah. fast, but thank you. And so we're happy to talk about any of them. And, That's great. Um, and hopefully some of the, it sounds like some of the things are already being addressed by the other pieces of this, but if there are other things that we could be done to make sure that some of these things um, happen, would be great. That's great. Great, thank you. If you can provide the written copies, that'd be great. Wendy, yes. That's perfect, thank you so much. Great. Dr. Amy is perfect. Okay, perfect. Thanks a lot. Other, uh, either questions for uh, Wendy or comments from the public? Okay. Um, given, I think, our interest in uh, both moving forward but incorporating uh, this feedback and certainly reviewing the feedback that we can, I suggest that we continue for two weeks uh, and uh, during that time work to incorporate the feedback that we can in this process. Plus, any other additional comments by others that may have received this document? Exactly. Yeah, and we'll have two more weeks now, so, so we'll. Exactly. Just reach out to the normal list of those and yep. go beyond if it's needed. <laughs> Is there a motion for uh, uh, continuance for two weeks? Take a motion to continue item number one on today's agenda for two weeks. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Moving on to the public hearing section of the meeting. Uh, the first item is on a set of petitions by MK Parcel 7 Development LLC for the acceptance of pedestrian easements 
adjacent to the following public ways in Boston proper. This was new business on August 10th, 2017. The locations are Beacon Street on its southeasterly side at address number 771-775 northeast of Maitland Street. David Ortiz Drive on its northwestly side northeast of Maitland Street, Overland Street. Maitland Street on its northeasterly side between Beacon Street and David Ortiz Drive. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan 771 and 775 Beacon Street, Boston proper, three sheets dated May 15th, 2017. Good morning. My name is Kevin Wright. I'm with VHB with Civil Engineers. I'm here with uh, John Rosenthal from MK Parcel 7, representing ownership. Paul Maloney from the architectural team, uh, which is the architect. Marcus Cantu from Copley Wolf with the landscape architect. And uh, Dennis Bell from Hale and Aldrich, uh, representing the geotechnical team. I'll turn it over to John to introduce the project to you. Good morning. and. When I grow up, I want to make sure Fenway Center gets fully developed. Uh, it's been a long haul, and a lot of you have been a part of this for a long time. And uh, believe it or not, we're finally here and ready to start. Um, so my firm, Meredith MK Parcel 7, developed Yaki Station. Um, incredibly proud, you know, as someone who loves trains, to have built a train station uh, on time and on budget, and it is getting more use than anyone ever anticipated. And my vision always was to make Fenway Center, which is sort of at the gateway to Boston, uh, where the pebble drops for smart growth and transit-oriented development. Um, we had to build Fenway Center first. It was a, I mean, build Yaki Station first. It was a tremendous challenge. Uh, as we have all heard, you know, mind the gap. I mean, this train station is on a curve, um, and it turned a, um, a part-time station with 17 stops a day into a full-time, full-service station with full-length platforms, east and west, and over 40 stops a day uh, for the number one economic engine in the Commonwealth, which is Longwood Medical Area, Fenway Park, and the Kenmore Fenway Institution. So I uh, really a dream come true. So now we are ready. Um, for phase two of this mixed-use development uh, surrounding transit. Um, and phase one uh, is a combination of uh, 312 apartments, uh, 38,000 square feet of retail, uh, below-grade parking improvements to uh, underutilized parking areas, uh, parking lots, surface lots, and windswept bridges and, and, uh, and sidewalks that are difficult to navigate um, to, um, frankly, doorways and, and amenity-oriented retail and, and a new neighborhood at the gateway to Boston. Uh, this will be the new Tower Records building. Um, and uh, phase one is uh, approximate cost is $240 million, so it is no small project. Um, and phase two, uh, we expect to commence construction before 2020. Um, and that will be the balance of, of the air rights over the highway uh, and the station, um, a 27-story tower that will have mixed-use residential and commercial, a uh, shared-use parking garage that literally will turn over four times a day between the Longwood Medical Area, Fenway Businesses, Fenway Park, uh, residents, um, and uh, and then a, an apartment building on Brookline Ave that will hide the garage. So. Uh, we have to, we had to build the station before we could do phase one. We have to build phase one before we could do phase two. Uh, phase one and two, uh, but phase one will, uh, is a joint venture with Girding Edlin. I mean, they're sort of the perfect partner for a guy that cares about smart growth, transit, and energy-oriented development. Um, and uh, we share a lot of the same values. I mean, they approached me when I had, um, talked about Fenway Center and, and uh, they loved the gun violence prevention billboard and they loved the work I've done around homelessness in Boston and they wanted to be a part of this project. So it was sort of this nonprofit effort that also morphed into this. Um, so uh, we, are, uh, we are basically at the end of the de uh, negotiations and drafting of the lease with Mass DOT. They are fully on board. We expect to have a groundbreaking by the end of September. Um, all the debt and equity are raised, and um, uh, the lease will be going to the governor at the end of next week for signature. Uh, he has 30 days to sign to 
but MassDOT's fully, fully on board. Um, and um, we will have a closing and a groundbreaking. So uh, this is one of the last pieces. Uh, it's, I've been waiting to come to PIC for a long time. And um, we look forward to, uh, to proceeding. I think you know, the team um, are n no strangers to Boston between VHB, uh, the architectural team, John Moriarty and Associates will be the contractor. Um, and uh, we've met with all the abutters over a long period of time, uh, and they're all in support. Um, we've been through all the permits and approvals and uh, literally ready to begin as soon as we have this approval, the signature from the governor, and, uh, and we're off and running. So thank you so much for your support and patience over the years, and uh, look forward to getting this thing done together. Um, I'm going to introduce Paul Maloney from the architectural team, and of course I'll be around for any questions, and, unless you have them now. That was a great intro. Thank you. Paul Maloney with the architectural team. Uh, just to touch a little more on what John said about the building, it's uh, 312 apartments, 38,000 square feet of new retail space, which is access from both Beacon Street and David Ortiz Drive. Um, also, we are replacing an existing parking lot with and providing over 20,000 square feet of new publicly accessible green space and open space. Um, and, it, and a, a very important piece of that is a connection between Beacon Street and Yawkey Station, which provides the only accessible route from Beacon Street to the station. Um, and we've met with the Disabilities Commission a few times. Uh, we made some, made some edits, and, and we're also providing a public elevator, 24-7 uh, publicly accessible elevator that gets from David Ortiz Drive up to the plaza level. So um, I'll turn it over. So Kevin, so the plaza have? level, when you bring that up, it, it opens up onto Beacon Street? It opens up onto our plaza, but at the same level as Beacon Street. Not in a building. But I just want a clarification here. So you cannot go to Beacon Street from the plaza? You, you can go to Beacon Street from the plaza. Yes. That was one of my concerns that I asked the last time about basically mid-block crossings, basically focusing that pedestrian pathway at an unsignalized, no crosswalk location. I think I, was, I thought I was very clear with that last week. But well, I think I think the discussion the discussion last time not more related to the fact that we didn't have any doors. Exactly. No, it was basically pedestrian pathways that would bring the pedestrian pathway to a mid-block situation where I would have pedestrians going across the street without a crosswalk, without a signal. Well, I think part of what which occurs now with the station. I can try and add to this. We're in the middle of um, discussing Mark Young as PhD um, with the uh, BTP planning as part of our tap up to reinforce the crossing and maintenance in Beacon. Uh, and they have a, they're currently in design of a project which goes from Audubon Circle all the way into Kenmore Square, which includes light lanes, restriping, crosswalks, beautification. It also includes a um, crosswalk at this location that they're designing and they've asked us as a project to contribute to that and that um, commitment is included in our capital and so that's something that timeline wise seems to be part of say a crosswalk where are you talking about a crosswalk at the top of Maiden Street crossing the street. so that's where we're proposing the signal under this phase two of this project yeah so it's not same spot it's very close to this plaza it's just do, we, do you have a, a, a way in which we can look at essentially the, the point of access for the stairway down to uh, the station, where the plaza would hit Beacon Street, and where the Maitland Beacon Street intersection is, just so we can get a sense of? Perfect. Thank you. So this is a view, view of Beacon Street. So we're looking at the station here, our pedestrian access to the station here, and then the opening of our plaza. Do you know the distance from the proposed crosswalk to where the train station plaza hits the street street grade? From the train yeah, from like there to, to where the crosswalk would be. What's that distance? I'm guess it's about
people are only willing to walk so far to get to a crosswalk before they jaywalk. So it would be nice to know how far away the crosswalk will be. So here's the closed crosswalk. The plaza that we're talking about is this plaza between building one and two, where there will be an elevator. And how do you get to the train station? So get to the train station by either coming across here, uh, going into the elevator, or uh, walking through this plaza down the grand stair to the train station, or your uh, disability or don't want to come down through the stairs, just come, come along the 12, it's a roughly 30 foot pedestrian deck over the inbound platform and the train uh, rails uh, that so, will be built on air rights over the station. Okay, so then if you go that way, then you have to go down a set of stairs. If you go this way to the station, there's four glass enclosed elevators at the mezzanine level of the train station that this pedestrian deck goes directly to at the same grade, and then you're down elevators or stairs. So where do you envision most of the pedestrian traffic coming from, let's say, the crosswalk area getting to the station? What is the path of the well, anticipated going, path of travel? Yeah, currently, you know, folks are coming from Brookline <coughs> and down Beacon Street, you know, basically are just going along the sidewalk and just along the bridge, right? And just can't go square to catch the train. Or they're going down uh, <coughs> stairs, new stairs that were built during when we built the station, and they're directly from the Beacon Street Bridge down to the station platform. So, in fact, before you get to that point, you can come in here and get into an elevator down, uh, or you can walk down this way. So it's, it's either those elevators, I mean, those stairs go away, because one, they're not accessible, uh, and this new landscape pedestrian deck goes directly to the, to the elevators, or again, you can come into this, what we're calling a plaza between the buildings, and get an elevator down. Or, so it's a grand stair versus just an open stairs. Again, the concern is what's occurring today when people come out of the station up to Beacon and walk across the street unprotected is the concern. So when they come out of the station, they walk along David Ortiz Way, go back up Maitland Street, which they've been doing for a long time, and that comes right to the crosswalk here. Or they can come up the grand stair and go Right now, right now, the way that it operates with that the train station ramp that comes up to Beacon, there's a lot of mid-block unprotected crossings that occur on a daily basis. I actually think that this deck will drive more of that foot traffic through the day of the piece because if, you, if the train drops it off on the inbound platform, there's no stair to get you up to Beacon Street anymore. We've eliminated that stair. So you're, you're sort of forced, so you're either coming down here, taking the elevator up to the platform, or you're just coming so the, the crosswalk proposed for Maitland, is that phase one? Yes. <coughs> and right now, right now, right, right now it's not proposed to have a signal, correct? No. And I asked you to get Don Burgess the <coughs> warrant analysis? He's, he's in a room. We actually had a meeting on it last week. Um, we Charlotte and Don are both in the warrant analysis. So um, Don has a copy of the warrant analysis. Yeah. And Charlotte asked us for additional information on pedestrian warrants, which we are collecting the data this weekend, which I think we got yesterday, um, to build a case on the pedestrian side, which the Hayfield side is done, um, and that will improve the timing of the signals one way or the other. Okay. Also I appreciate that. Well, part of the, the larger. Right now, there is no good crosswalk across there, so people can right. walk where they want. And I think when you, 100 feet down, when you create a, a good crosswalk, yeah, I think people do want to cross that formalized intersection where they have a confidence level, but again, they're only willing to walk so far. So nailing down what that distance is, I'd like to know that. But since the uh, I think is not an angle, your destination might be Montreux over here, yeah. so you're not going to go like this anyway. and stuff to, to basically formulate a, a pedestrian desire line 
to the class walk front. Any techniques we want to take pride to look at that? Is there some repairs we'd be looking at at Beacon Street, things that we can do to encourage folks to use the Maitland Crossing rather than to right. the cross across Beacon and other places. Kevin, can you talk a little bit about the, the easements, the, the first item, and then we'll move on to specific repairs? Yes. In particular, name your top. All right, members of the public. All right, I'll entertain a motion on uh, this first item. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by MK Parcel Seven Development LLC for the acceptance of pedestrian easements in Beacon Street, David Ortiz Drive, and Maitland Street, as read into the record by the chair, and as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan. 771 and 775 Beacon Street, Boston proper, three sheets dated May 15, 2017. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Moving on to the second item. On a set of petitions by MK Parcel 7 Development, LLC, for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of sidewalk and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavement, street trees, landscaping, and driveway curb cuts. This was new business on August 10, 2017. The locations are Beacon Street on its southeasterly side at address number 771-775, northeast of Maitland Street, David Ortiz Drive on its northwestly side, northeast of Maitland Street slash Overland Street, and Maitland Street on its northeasterly side between Beacon Street and David Ortiz Drive. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan 771 and 775 Beacon Street, Boston Proper, four sheets, dated May 15, 2017. Again, this is the Beacon Street uh, specific repair plan. Uh, in addition, we have parks and planters and trees and things like that on Beacon Street for the application of the Disabilities Commission, National Grid, uh, and talking for the, uh, with those groups. Uh, it seems like this needs to be aligned uh, with and restricted with anything like, like that. Really. I need to share, and I apologize for not sharing it at your new business. We've been, John, we've been waiting for your project for some time, and there are many aspects, but one aspect is the street light system that fronts Beacon Street, because of the bridge section, we have two separate lighting systems. We don't have any conduits going over this bridge. To the extent, to the 
extent that this project can help give consideration to managing that situation so that we have a, a, con a better functioning street lighting system that affronts your wonderful project is what we are looking for. So I haven't figured out all the details, Mark, but if conversations can be there between your team and the city team to understand what opportunities might be there to install the necessary conduits that traverse the bridge section because I don't know how much you are going to impact the bridge itself because the bridge doesn't belong to the city. I think it's a state asset. So whatever gets done has to be properly coordinated. So it is not an unnecessary burden to you, John, but hopefully we can do the right thing to, uh, to provide a better lighting system. Sounds like the first step is once we get a set of conduits through there, exactly. connect it all up, and then we'll figure out the circuitry. Right. One thing to note that you know to build on what Kevin said is that along Beacon Street, under the street, the street's hollowed by essentially hollow boxes, and they did that to keep the road over the Teton light. So we do have a gap in there we can work with, but that's another thing that's driving kind of how the streetscape's designed. So it's so. a very unique situation, but we're working with everybody. As long as consideration can be given between all of us. And we're rebuilding the sidewalk, so we should be able to get conduit. That's right. what I thought. Yeah. We move on to uh, Beacon or, Ma or uh, Maitland. Uh, oh, sorry. Maitland? Yes, sorry. David Ortiz. Yes, sorry. Oh, David Ortiz. David Ortiz. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, David Ortiz, we're uh, proposing sidewalk, the concrete sidewalk. Uh, currently there's a six foot sidewalk out on uh, David Ortiz. Uh, we're adding sidewalks to the base of the building, uh, which will increase the width. Uh, with that, we put in permanent locations, uh, a permanent paper strip along the front end with uh, new trees. We've been in uh, conversation with uh, Boston Water Sewer related to those trees. We're in the process of updating uh, details Street lights we coordinated are to be maintained as they are in the current building location. The current uh, design was recently completed when the ABOTs was done. Uh, so we're, we're keeping the street lights as they in the current location of the current uh, design that's shown on the street lights. Did the PAC accept David or his state? From the state? From the state. Okay, so manage that situation so that this commission both will have. Uh, yeah, we did. To just dot the eyes yep, of the piece, okay? That's some water and sewer comments that Kevin just alluded to. It's probably a good time to read them. So, Boston Water and Sewer has the 42 inch steel transmission main that runs very close to, along to this site, which is obviously our main concern. Um, steel transmission mains can be finicky creatures. So, as I've coordinated with VHB in the project, um, we will allow the raised concrete planters and the associated trees on top of the water main with the following conditions that we maintain, the commission maintains easements for accessing that pipe from the street. Should we ever have a need to access that pipe, it would be the owner's responsibility to remove the tree, the planter, and everything to allow us to dig and access that pipe at no expense or delay to the commission. Planters should include engineered root barriers intended to protect the transmission main underneath from any excessive root intrusion. And species of trees should be carefully so selected to avoid species that are characteristic of large tap roots that would grow down, grow straight down to the soil with the potential to damage the pipe. Further, no trees shall be planted on top of water, sewer, or drain services to the buildings. These are considered private laterals that the commission will not own, and it is in the best interest of the project and the project owners to avoid any issues with their private laterals resulting in trees. Thanks. All of the maintenance comments, we will make sure are incorporated in the associated element. Great. 
Other questions or comments on the specific repairs? Just to reinforce the conversation we were having earlier, obviously we, we want to make sure that as you create this plaza, as you approve the access to the station, that we are doing all the things that you guys want to do of making Beacon Street, the frontage on Beacon Street, even a more lively, wonderful place. We want to make sure that's a safe crossing. So as you proceed with the TAPA um, to work with Don uh, and Charlotte on uh, potentially signalizing Maitland Street from the beginning, looking at the plaza design to figure out how we actually encourage folks to cross at Maitland uh, rather than taking a, a different path of travel over to Montford Street. Amy or Todd? No. Members of the public? Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the petition by MK Parcel 7 Development LLC for making specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of sidewalk and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavement, street trees, landscaping, and driveway curb cuts, all is read into the record by the chair and is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan 771-775, Beacon Street, Boston, proper, four sheets dated May 15, 2017. Second. Aye. The third item is on a petition by MK Parcel 7 Development, LLC, for the granting of an earth retention license for the installation of a temporary earth support system within the following public ways in Boston proper. Beacon Street on the southeasterly side at address number 771-775 northeast of Maitland Street and Maitland Street on its northeasterly side between Beacon Street and David Ortiz Drive. This was new business on August 10th, 2017. This is as shown on a, on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Temporary Earth Retention Plan Fenway Center Boston one sheet dated August 11th, 2017. Again, I'm here with Dennis Bell from uh, Alan Aldrich, who will speak to uh, what is shown on the temporary support plan. Don't want to be What's that? Is this in the groundwater overlay district? Is this in the tree court district? I, I will, I'll clarify. Check? Yep. Thank you. I'm Dennis Bell with Haley and Aldrich. And to complete the underground portion of the, this project, the parking garage will be installing a slurry wall within the limits of the property line. However, to construct it, we need some, some room in order to construct the slurry wall, and that's where mainly the uh, solar pile lagging system that we propose along Maitland Street. The majority of it is within our property. Uh, there is a small portion up near Beacon Street that will be on, um, next to, on public property. And then also on Beacon Street, uh, we'll be taking the sidewalk. Again, there's a vault structure on top of the Green Line Tunnel currently. We'll be exposing that, and to maintain Beacon Street, we'll be placing some concrete gravity blocks, um, three foot in height, just to maintain Beacon Street. So, that's Amy, uh, I'm sure this project has gone through cycles of review, but to get this PIC board has transit reality or its equivalents within MBTA, you folks need to get PIC a letter from the MBTA stating that the MBTA operations are, are content with your plans. Okay, and I'm sure you have done that, right? You have something on these plans. Please say yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. Okay. No, yes, no. I we have uh, we have worked with MBTA. You're asking this commission to do something that is a little bit awkward. Right. So make sure that we have that paperwork so that this commission can take the necessary recording purposes. Do we have the paperwork today? Uh, we do not. I think that uh, Paul can alliterate what they just met and finalize some things with the MBTA. We just had a follow-up meeting with the MBTA. So it's our final group. Dr. Ice, trust that he's get the paperwork to Ms. Cording yeah. so that she can do her thing. Thank you. So when you're talking about putting in this uh, temporary rest report system up at Beacon Street and taking the sidewalk, so are we talking about the city of Boston right away, or are we talking about the bridge DOT, Mass DOT? City of Boston. City of Boston. Uh, yes. All right, city of Boston. So the construction management plan, I believe, has not been approved. It's, uh, yeah, it's been submitted, and it's, it's not approved yet. Right, so kind of making an assumption about giving away a sidewalk here uh, based on that design. That's a conversation we're going to have to have between the project and John Moriarty and Associates to get that uh, in process because I haven't even looked at the plan. 
And so we need to get that done. So the amazing BHB team, just do your homework quickly so that this project, long awaited project, can maintain its uh, momentum. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that this is probably the most intrusive version. If we sit down with you and you decide you want something modified, it's likely less intrusive. So. Okay, let's, let's get that done. Get, get on the schedule. And we'll, it's an important project. We want to make sure that this gets expedited properly. These are small details in the larger scheme of things, okay, because you've done great work. But you guys need to support the team. Okay, so do your thing. And if the contractor has a room, do it right now. I can also tell you with absolute certainty because I've been at every one of the meetings with MPPA and MassDOT. They have the same high priority and support for this project. And we've been through those reviews and we're continuing the plan for these. We submitted the 90% drawings to MassDOT. They have very few comments. Or to MBTA, they have very few comments. Now we're doing the same. Other questions or comments? Tim, you're top. Nope. Members of the public. All right, I'll entertain a motion uh, on this item contingent on uh, final receipt of the necessary approvals from the state. Make a motion to approve a petition by MK Parcel 7 Development LLC for the granting of an earth retention license, the installation of temporary earth support system within the following public ways in Boston proper, as read into the record by the chair, as shown in the set of plans entitled City of Boston. Public Works Department Engineering Division, Temporary Earth Retention Plan, Fenway Center, Boston, one sheet dated August 11th, 2017. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Can I just make one quick comment because this is the culmination of many years and uh, it is absolutely a model for public private partnerships. I mean, we've all lived in Boston for a long time. We all know what that sea of surface parking lots looked like before the state funded the new roads and before the Yachty Station. I mean, this is, this is really a great leveraging of city, state, private resources to improve the quality of life and turn surface parking lots and bridges into a neighborhood with doorways and businesses and residents. Uh, and, you know, I am deeply committed and appreciative for your efforts to help us make this of really where you can live, a model for where you can live, work, and play without the need for a car, and to improve the quality of life in Boston. Thank you for your service, and thank you for your support. Congratulations, Milestone. Yes. The next item is on a joint petition by South End 10 LLC and South End 11 LLC for the granting of an earth retention license for the installation of a temporary earth support system within Harrison Avenue, Boston proper. Located on its southeasterly side at address number 370-380 between East Berkeley Street and Traveler Street. This was new business on August 10th, 2017. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Conceptual Temporary Excavation Support Plan 370-380 Harrison Avenue, Boston Proper, three sheets dated June 2017. Good morning. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present to you this morning. My name is Andrew Hayes with Related Beal. Um, with me, I have Matt Collins, with, who's the project executive on, with Related Beal Construction, Mary Marshall, who's our permitting counsel um, with Nutter, Brett Benson uh, from Util, who's our architect, Jonathan Patch from McPhail, um, and John Cusack from Bryant. Um, I will turn it over to John Cusack uh, to walk through kind of our, our plan for today. Uh, we'll be presenting our supportive excavation uh, plan. Good morning. We presented the plan initially at the new business portion of the public hearing uh, two weeks ago. And uh, just to give you some background on this, this is the supportive excavation uh, steel sheeting portion of the contract only. We got various issues to resolve with the surface restoration between types of materials, public access, and it was more practical for us to separate the two components to allow uh, the SOE system to go forth independently. Uh, we went through the normal process of uh, distributing the information to the various uh, public agencies and the private utility companies. Uh, we received a 
series of comments back, uh, which was uh, forwarded to the uh, PIC staff to distribute to the board members. And we did have a uh, start of the conversation at the new, new business uh, portion of the meeting last week. And probably the uh, most significant outstanding item to reach resolution on was the traffic management plan. And in the meantime, uh, Matt Collins has had a couple of meetings with BCD to try to get that going in the right direction. Uh, Jonathan Patch, the geotech engineer uh, from McPhail, who designed the supportive excavation system, is here also, and he can answer any questions on the SOE system. Uh, we did receive a comment from BWSC asking us to confirm there's no tiebacks. Everything is a cross-bracing system internal, so there's no activity related to the SOE system out in the street. So if there are any geotech or excavation questions, Jonathan can handle those, and Matt Collins can handle any questions related to the traffic management plan. So what I'll start off by saying is the construction management I've met with Mr. Collins on a couple occasions, and I think that we've made uh, good progress. And I appreciate, Matt, your, uh, your team being available and uh, basically taking in the conditions what, what we've been discussing. I think we've made good progress, so I'm comfortable uh, moving forward with this. John, in larger context, when will you be coming for the specific repair plans? Uh, we expect to come back in the fall. There's a series of uh, items to be resolved with different agencies uh, with related to type of surface material, pedestrian pathways, because there's a uh, open pathway going diagonally through the site from Traveler Street to uh, uh, Harrison Avenue. There are other issues to resolve. Uh, there are a series of uh, trees under consideration uh, in the same vicinity of the existing BWSC uh, duct alliance sewer, which is in the existing sidewalk right now. And there's other issues about uh, surface features such as bike racks. And we are doing coordination work with uh, the City Public Works Department related to the Harrison Avenue construction program because we're going to establish the new curb line, which was laid out by uh, VHP as part of the Harrison Ave program. So probably in the fall. Have you planned on starting construction, or has it started already? Matt can answer that. Uh, right now, it's only demonstrating the building. We've only abated the building as of today. Um, we're looking forward to uh, downloading the existing Fortran Bakery um, on September of October and start construction before the end of the year. So to do this work, you will still need to pull permits from the Public Works and Transportation Department? Yes. We have made the first round submittal to BWSC in the site plan review process. We have comments back from them. Uh, so that's one of the next things we'll be going forward with. And yeah, and they've, they've received comments from us uh, regarding the support of excavation, the uh, pre-inspection of the sewer in close proximity, and the vibration deflection monitoring for the during construction activities when you're excavating over grade. And after we uh, reach final agreement with BTD on the construction management plan, we need to go visit with the MBTA because they have a bus stop on East Berkeley Street. Other questions or comments? Okay, Mayor Todd. Okay. Members of the public. All right, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve a petition on the previous page. Joint petition by South End 10 LLC and South End 11 LLC for the granting of an earth retention license at Harrison Avenue as read into the record by the chair and shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Conceptual Temporary Excavation Support Plan, 370 through 380 Harrison Avenue, Boston proper, three sheets dated June 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is on a petition by Big Night Ventures 5 LLC for the granting of a sidewalk cafe license for seasonal outdoor seating within Tremont Street, Boston proper, located on its easterly side at address number 186, north of Boylston Street, and consisting of seating for 24 persons and approximately 155 square feet within the public way. This was new business on August 10th, 2017. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Sidewalk Cafe Plan 186, Tremont Street, Boston proper, one sheet dated August 14th, 2017.
morning, members of the board. Kristen Scanlon, counsel for the applicant, Big Night Venues, Boston 5, LLC. With me this morning, seated to my right, is Robert Stan Stancil of Beacon Architectural Associates, uh, who I know is with you at the new business hearing regarding this proposal for a sidewalk cafe outside of 186 Tremont Street at a new restaurant to be known as Explorator, which is a new tenant of the Grand Mason's Lodge. Um, at this point, I'll turn it over to Mr. Stancil to walk you through any changes made uh, since a new business hearing regarding the proposed sidewalk cafe and can certainly answer any additional questions the board may have after that. Thank you, Kristen. My name is Bob Stancil from Beacon Architectural. Uh, again, uh, this is the sidewalk cafe application for 186 Tremont Street, which was heard at the new business on uh, August 10th. Uh, subject to, to the initial filing for this, we have heard from the uh, Boston Planning uh, Agency and also from Disabilities Commission with some comments and adjustments to the plans that have been made in accordance with those. Uh, planning, uh, planning agency were primarily dimensional questions. Um, the adjustments for the Disability Commission comments had to do with the table bases which have been adjusted and the uh, type of barrier uh, to make sure there was cane detection. Uh, we've changed from a bollard and chain, which was shown on the original application, to a, a more uh, solid fence. Uh, those will be shown. Uh, those will be shown. See the bike, the bike rack. Bike rack? Right. No, the, the, the first one, that one. Okay. Now I'm not sure whether that shows up on your plans. Can you put up your plan? Does the bike rack show up on that plan? I don't know. If it did, I didn't see. No. Because but my concern is the six feet, six inches, pinch point. That's about I'm not that tall, but if I was six feet, six it's about this size. And there's so much pedestrian traffic there today because of the school. So we continue to be very excited about this project, but we need you to be recognizing the fact that if we find people spilling onto the sidewalk, I'm sorry, to the street, that would be an undesirable situation. And we will need your consideration to adjust these as the needs of the city. Well, so I, might just, I might just add that the level of service analysis that was submitted did account for the uh, the bike rack in the analysis. Oh, okay, so, so, so it's not representative, but the, the engineer did, did the provide that. So uh, again, I'm very happy that the analysis has been done, which gives us the comfort to approve this. But again, during operations, we got this analysis. It doesn't show peak time uses, okay? And if we find that it is an awkward situation. We hope that you will continue to work with the city to adjust the width of the city. Thank you, sir. Either way, we'll need to see the bike rack on the plan and the dimension from your fence to that bike rack. And if it doesn't meet our minimum dimension, or maybe just for your own business, you would consider moving it moving to the wider part of the sidewalk in the furnishing zone. Perfect. Exactly. So it is a possibility to move the bike rack to another location? 100%. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, it is. Exactly. Other questions or comments? I've seen the event was beautiful. I think it's a, a tremendous, uh, you know, upgrade for that uh, area, and uh, it, it looks like an exciting space. I'm glad you made it through last weekend. I know there's concern about um, the frontage that you had put on there, so that, that's a 
relief, I'm sure. Yeah, now that the barriers are down, it does look good. I think there's, oh, thank you. We just want it to be the best. Thank you. Amir Todd. Oh, okay. Members of the public, please. Hi, I'm uh, Doug Meyer with the Downtown Boston Business Improvement District. Uh, we were established in 2010. Uh, we work on behalf of our property owner members to make conditions in downtown crossing better for all community stakeholders. Our, um, just to give the commissioners a, a concept of our exact official boundaries, our northeast corner is 28 State Street. Our no northwest corner is the steaming tea kettle building, 63 Court. Our southeast boundary is more or less um, the State Street Financial Tower, 1 Lincoln Street. And our southwest boundary is 186 Tremont Street, uh, the Grand Masonic Lodge, where, of course, uh, this proposed sidewalk cafe is to be um, operating. So needless to say, uh, it's an extremely vital gateway for us there, the corner of Tremont and Boylston. Everyone is very aware with uh, aware of the uh, immense pedestrian traffic volumes there. <coughs> uh, we would like to give our uh, a qualified support for this right now. And I say qualified only in terms of um, a fluke of timing and that our, our senior planner uh, did not have the opportunity to uh, review the site diagram uh, and whatnot. Um, nevertheless, uh, over the past few years, we've uh, within the bid, I believe there's been four pick approved sidewalk cafes that have opened. You have Cafe Nero on Summer Street Plaza, the Burnham Building, uh, right next to the Roach Brothers uh, Sidewalk Cafe, also on Summer Street Plaza, outside the Burnham Building. And then you have outside Millennium Place, the Cafe Nero there, and also the Legal Crossing uh, Sidewalk Cafe, also outside Millennium Place. Um, in each case, we always strongly advocate for them, but uh, where the conditions can change, we work very closely with those operators to make sure that if any fine tuning has to occur on the fly in, in, to address changing conditions, that that works as best as possible. And in this case, we very much look forward to working with the, the proponent, Ed Kane and Big Night Ventures, to, and pick uh, as needed to make any on the fly adjustments and fine tunings as conditions may change down at that corner. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, Appreciate that you guys will work with the bid uh, on any adjustments that they may see fit and work with the BTD on any changes to the actual location of the bike racks if that occurs, if it's creating a pinch point that's less than six feet, six inches. Great. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by Big Night Venues Boston 5 LLC for the granting of the sidewalk cafe license for the seasonal outdoor seating within Tremont Street, Boston proper located on an easterly side at address 186 north of Boylston Street and consisting of seating for 24 persons and approximately 330 square feet within the public way. All are shown on set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division Sidewalk Cafe Plan, 186 Tremont Street, Boston Proper, one sheet dated August 14, 2007. Second. Uh, Favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is on a petition by Light Tower Fiber Networks for the rental of City Shadow to install new telecommunications fiber in existing conduit within the pu following public ways in South Boston, Summer Street from Melcher Street to a point southeasterly at address number 266, and Melcher Street between Summer Street and Neko Street. This was new business on August 10th, 2017. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan. 266 Summer Street, Boston, one sheet, dated July 26th, 2017. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Herb Bertoni from Light Tower. Um, there have been no changes, and everything has been cleared with uh, Amy and Todd. This is the public hearing. Do you need to say a little bit more? Um, Basically, you are renting City Shadow? Yes, we're renting City Shadow for fiber uh, from um, on Melcher Street from Neko up to 266 Summer Street. As part of this effort, are you in need to dig up any of the streets in the immediate vicinity? We are going to be, have to do a dig from the manhole in front of 266 across the sidewalk into the front of the building. A short dig. We just need to make the lateral from this connection right. into the building. Right, but nothing, nothing major. Nothing major. No. Rest of Summer Street, because the city is going to rebuild Summer Street, we want to make sure that you have your assets yes. where they need to be. Yeah, right. Okay, because once we build the street, no one gets to touch it. Correct. Okay. Yes. When, when do you expect to run the fiber? As soon as Tomorrow. possible. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> and to dig the lateral, same thing? Yes. yes. Correct. Right. What's the material of the sidewalk where the lateral is being dug? It's going to be concrete. It's concrete right now. It's concrete now? Yeah. And it'll be concrete when you're done? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just note that uh, 
to uh, Parr's point, after the Summer Street reconstruction, there will be a cycle track there. There will be some street furnishings there. Uh, sort of digging into that sidewalk after the completion of the Summer Street project will be far more complex than it is today. Yes, so make sure that it is at a, at a sufficient depth, your lateral connection, so that it's not going to get. Yes, yeah, so it will be at least 24, yeah, maybe 30 inches. Right. Thank you. Right. Other questions or comments? Amy or Todd? Nope. Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the petition by Light Tower Fiber Networks for the rental of. City Shadow Conduit in Summer Street and Melcher Street as read into the record of, by the chair as shown on a set of plans titled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan 266 Summer Street Boston One Sheet dated July 26, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Okay. Thank you. The next item is on a petition by National Grid for a grant of location to relocate a gas regulator stationed within Bowdoin Street, Dorchester to be located on its southeasterly side, northeast of Quincy Street, below the grade of the sidewalk. This was new business on August 10th, 2017. Uh, this is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan, Bowdoin Street at Quincy Street, Dorchester. Five sheets dated June 27th, 2017. Good morning, and thank you uh, for allowing us to come back and um, follow up on, I believe, two items from the last meeting um, following the approval. Um, and actually, I'd like to have, uh, cover one additional one as well. But on Bowdoin Street, uh, we had two, two requests. One was to um, redesign from the gas line around the water out in that design. So we, we have done that. That is the new uh, plan for that. So that addresses that concern. And we also had a, uh, a very pr productive meeting with the uh, Commission on Disability to review the uh, plate. Um, in fact, we have uh, left uh, samples with, with her. Um, and she has granted her approval on it, and uh, I think we've, it's, uh, I'll try to say it without too many S's, but it's a safety, sure grip, slip, resistant uh, plate. From that end, it's actually um, higher grade than, than what's even required. Um, so it's a, it's a nice little sample from that end. So uh, from those two follow-up items, we, we believe we cover those two from that end. And can you just talk sort of in general about the need to, uh, build the new regulator, move the current regulator, and replace it with this new regulator? Sure, I, um, and if I miss some, I'm sure they'll be able to help me. But uh, one of the things that we're trying to do as the city improves as well, um, we're, we're improving our infrastructure, um, both from a safety and a reliability standpoint. Uh, safety is, is twofold, really, um, for the uh, safe service of natural, uh, natural gas uh, to all the customers uh, that this regulator station serves as well as the uh, men and women from National Grid that are going in and working on it. Uh, the older systems have one vault. We have to climb in from that end. Uh, this new design, and, and the old one is 50 plus years old, uh, so you're running into a you know, concern from that standpoint. This new design actually um, separates the, the uh, higher feed coming in to the lower feed, so we're able to uh, work in both areas um, in a safe fashion from that end. Um, additionally, this, uh, these regulator stations were, were designed to put in, uh, from a low pressure standpoint, uh, put in certain areas to roughly maybe 2,000, 3,000 customers are running off these regulator stations. So again, any improvement that we can do, both replacing pipes, but also uh, the critical component of those uh, services going on, and the regulator stations are that. And we do have a short window in terms of when we work it. Uh, because you never know when the winter's coming. Not would hate to say that in August, um, but you know we have to we have to look at that and try to get in there. Okay. Other questions or comments? Please. So I went back and looked at that water main that kind of is right in the middle of, of your work, and it, lucky enough, we, it is a 1972 uh, cement line ductile iron pipe. In terms of water main age, it's very new. There should not be a problem with it. Please be ginger with it. Thank you. you Yes. So, yes. Yep. Make sure that you have stuff the paper. No, we'll. You know we'll what I, yep. Yes, yes, yes. No. Tighten up the paper. No, no, thank you for that. But we did go ahead and, and redesign it as well from that end. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm Sarah Leung from the Disabilities Commission. Um, as previously mentioned, we did meet with engineers um, from National Grid to discuss um, the vault covered door. Um, Commissioner McCosh was present and we 
all agreed to move forward um, with the design that's proposed with the understanding that future projects would have um, a vault cover with um, the specified coding. Right. Thank you, sir. Just want to make sure that the National Grid understands future projects means anything beyond this one. Like the next one they come to, they should Correct. Um, so right. these. That you got a free pass we, we, on this we, we'd one. Act, no, we'd actually like to kind of put it in for this one. to the writing so it's yes. all. There you go. So I believe the project at Arlington and Beecham Street will also be yeah. um, proceed as proposed. The Charlestown. Um, yeah. But all future projects um, beyond okay. these two projects will um, have that coding. And just for clarification, Arlington and Beecham will have the previous coding. This project and all future projects will have the approved coding. No. No, no, no. The, no one the, on, the one at Quincy and Bodum yes. will, will, will have the existing that it. proposed along with uh, Arlington and Beach. Beach yeah. And after those two, all future projects okay. will right. have the coding that was Correct. So, yeah, so I think we no, had no. two follow up items to do, and uh, both will be using this new safety shield grip slip resistant. <laughs> I'll keep practicing. Right. Other questions or comments? Amy or Todd? Okay. Members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by National Grid for a grant of location to relocate a gas regulator station within Bowdoin Street, Dorchester, to be located on its southeasterly side, northeast of Quincy Street, below the grade of the sidewalk, shown in a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, grant of location plan, Bowdoin Street at Quincy Street, Dorchester, Five sheets dated June 27, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day. Moving on to new business. The first item is 40 Enterprise Street, Clapp Street, Dorchester. Pedestrian easement specific repairs on a set of petitions by the Pipe Fitters Association. Good morning. Uh, Steve Moderano from Bowler Engineering here to present the 40 Enterprise Street. Uh, the project is the Pipe Fitters Union Hall. Just to give you some background on, on what the project is, it just recently went through the Article 80 process with the BPDA. And really, the, uh, the Pipe Fitters Union Hall is there today. So they're in the process of abating and demolishing the existing facility. Uh, to replace it with a new state-of-the-art facility that's going to serve the three functions. One, it will be a new training center for the pipe fitters. It also serves as some of their pension uh, office management uh, duties as well as uh, union functions. So uh, it's a kind of a unique building, but it's, it's the existing use on the site being replaced and brought up to date. As part of that, we have some specific repairs to improve both aesthetics around the property as well as some functionality with, with the uh, sidewalk widths that are relatively narrow down there today. Um, and just from a timeline perspective, the project is obviously with the Pipe Fitters Union Hall closed. Currently, they they're have a very aggressive construction schedule and timeline because they don't have apprentices going through the program right now because they don't have their training facility. So it's, we're really trying to expedite the process. They've been moving through very quickly, which is, which is much appreciated. Uh, and we're here today to show uh, some of the progress we've made and then hear uh, any comments that, that uh, the commission may have relative to the improvements. Um, with me today is, is Brian Kelly, uh, who is a pipe fitters business manager uh, and union member. Uh, Heath Cody is from Spagnolo Geisness Architects, so if there's any building related questions. And then Jen Mullen uh, from Lemon Brook uh, Landscape Architecture Group can answer questions specific to landscape architecture. Please feel free to join us at the table.
So the, the improvements here, it's, it's uh, relatively small, so it might be a little bit difficult to see from that distance, but really what it is is we're trying to widen the sidewalks. How we accomplish that is we're proposing uh, pedestrian easements on both Enterprise Street and Clapp Street to allow the width to, to widen out um, the sidewalk to provide uh, some permeable paver strips as well as street trees and then provide a full five foot minimum sidewalk, concrete sidewalk to meet uh, the accessibility standards that the city has set forth. Uh, along with that, we're taking the, the current site has eight curb cuts uh, five of which are actively being used, but three more that are, are physically there in the sidewalk. We're cutting that down to just four total curb cuts, so all the other curb cuts will be uh, repaired and back to sidewalk grades as shown on the plans. Uh, the four uh, of the four curb cuts, the three passenger vehicle curb cuts are proposed at 24 feet. The loading curb cut is proposed at 30 feet, which is in the rear of the building uh, off of Clapp Street. Uh, and then the pervious paver strip is a two and a half foot strip with the street trees in that. And to supplement the street trees given the, the narrow width available, uh, there will be some structural soil that's implemented under the, under the sidewalks to ensure proper root growth and health of those trees. Um, Could you point out which curb cut is 30 feet? This one in the back of the building off of Clapp Street. Sure, my plan is 24 feet. Uh, it's, we're currently proposing 30. Okay. Make sure. Cut the plans, we take it accordingly because the 24 foot keeps doesn't require PIC approval if it is more than that, it does. So make sure that the plans show it correctly. Um, that little, you little bump out thing on Enterprise Street, yes. that work is being done by who and when? That work is part of the South Bay. Uh, expansion yeah, project? Yes, we did. Uh, we requested that thing. Uh, what's, the, what's the width of the side, the street? No, no, okay. You've got a pinch point, a crosswalk. What is that? I know it is outside this, but all of these pieces do. Right, it's to, it's to prevent the turning movement. So, like, it's. Yeah, but five truck needs to go through there, I'm going to assume, and this all got approved, sure. and that's minimum 20 feet. God bless us all. Okay. Yeah, so the, the they will allow less than 26 as long as it's not for a protracted period of time because that's for outriggers so that they know that they can stop. It's a bump out. They'll allow it. But, but not your building is going to go up really fast. Yes. I mean, that whole site plan. And that work is to be done by someone else at a point in time in the future. I don't know where they fall as far as their construction schedules and who's going to be where first. Do you have any communications with the South Bay? Uh, this is the same, he did South Bay, so I think that we could probably. Okay. So just ensure that, because I, I get a feeling your project is going to be up, running, and finalized. What's the, your timeline for construction, roughly? Mr. Chairman, the timeline is, is roughly the same as the South Bay project, okay. so we're going to be working together. together. So uh, just a little bit concerned about that. Hopefully, it will meet your needs as much as the totality of needs, so hopefully that little con that pinch point can be s flexible. Yep. Okay, because we are all guessing as to what your needs are going to be with the escape traffic coming out of South Bay. Just to go along with that, as Commissioner uh, Jay Sandy said, I sent some comments on the construction manner plan relative to coordination issues, uh, some of the site utilization. Uh, haven't heard you back yet, but I know you're probably working diligently on it. But that should be. Frank into the CMP relative to the phasing with South Bay in this project it should be represented in the construction man plan of who is building what. Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that that, that that happens. And you are in receipt of my comments, correct? Uh, I am not, uh, but I'll, I'll make sure our team is. Close the door, close the door. Yep. At 60,000 foot view, when the South Bay project came, uh, we, we are very excited. But now we are recognizing spin-off projects that are happening. So we need to make sure that the traffic circulation is compatible with the South Bay shopping needs with what's happening in the neighborhood. Do you 
have a uh, group site plan from Boston Water and Sewer yet? Or is it we, for comments? We have an approval for the cut and caps to do the demolition of the existing building. Okay. We've been through one round of review on site plan review for the proposed development and we're responding to some comments now. So Great. We're, we're happily through the process. Excellent, thank you. I apologize, I didn't give, get a chance to send you my comments before the new business, but you'll get written comments from me you know, prior to your public hearing. Okay, very good, thank you. In addition, the BPDA allowed this to move forward to new business. They have some, uh, just some few remaining comments that they'd like you to wrap up prior to your public hearing. Very good. I, I guess I, I just one last thing while while we're together here. We have been we did meet yesterday with uh, with folks from the Disabilities Commission as well as some uh, BPDA design staff, just really massaging the corners where we where we tie it back into the existing sidewalk. So in those areas, I believe your plan may still show that pervious paver strip just on the edges. So here. As we tie back into the, the community sidewalks, we're not going to have the pervious strip and we're gonna do a concrete sidewalk that tapers down to the width. So it's, it's a more gradual transition into the new streetscape. Any uh, the maintenance agreement be executed in time for the public hearing? Yeah, we'll be sure uh, to take our time. And we uh, are appreciative of you abiding by our complete state's guidelines. We appreciate you undertaking that at your expense by giving us an easement. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Is there anything in the specific repair plan that is sort of reflective of the spirit of the building itself and the use of the building itself? There may not be in the design, but I did note that if there's a design feature uh, that uh, in, the, in the public realm that reflects the, uh, uh, the work that will be happening inside. Um, Sorry, is there anything, is anything that makes it like a pipe fitter? Yeah. Like that I mean, you all do cool yeah. stuff, uh, but it is inside the building. We want to brag about what you do How outside. Do you know this is the pipe so <laughs> we didn't, what, what we tried to do when we worked very closely with the Neighborhood Association oh. and the BPDA yeah, 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 yeah. to make it so it did not look like a traditional brick and mortar uh, educational institution. We wanted it to look like a, a modern, timeless building that was going to kind of help in that redefining the, that area of Dorchester as we're developing out from the South Bay project. So we wanted, you know, we're kind of doing exactly the opposite. Do we want to certainly memorialize and brag of, about what we do? We do, and part of the way that we're doing that is with the, the, the signage inside that, that focal point glass tower that you see, and then the entire, if you look down at the bottom right hand um, corner of that rendering along Enterprise Street, that whole bottom, that, that's all glass. That, that, okay. that looks directly in from the sidewalk to our actual training uh, booths where the guys are, are welding, soldering, brazing, and cutting so we can show off what we do. So yeah, Thank you. I, you know, I, I hope that that's answers nice. your question in that's a little bit roundabout way. I just want to be able to reflect. <laughs> It, it's a way for folks to understand what's happening inside the building and understand the work that's yeah. going on on our streets. So we, we have a, a, a rich history in this area. We've been there for over 50, 50 years. It was really, really important to keep our roots in the city of Boston and, the, and, and celebrate that rich uh, labor history that Dorchester has. And, and, and to stay here is, is, is very, very important to certainly myself and, and the generations of members that I represent. You could have said that better. Thank you. Thank other questions or comments? Amir Todd, members of the public. All right, is two weeks enough time? All right, we'll see you on September 7th. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is Kinsale Lane and Milton Avenue in Hyde Park. A line and grade approval on a petition by the QA and Company.
Good morning, uh, Steve Sawyer with Design Consultants Inc. here with George uh, Morency, Morency and uh, Sean Hewitt. George is legal counsel for uh, the applicant and Sean is, works with uh, Cohane Company. Uh, the proposal is for a new public way. Uh, it includes a 40 foot wide public way with 26 foot wide travel way, six and a half foot sidewalks. The total length uh, of the new roadway would be about 300 feet. There is a uh, hammerhead turn turnaround. The purpose for this, this new way would be creating frontage and access to eight new lots. It's roughly about, I think it's about 1.7 acres of land. Uh, the location's at the very end of Milton Ave, near the Milton, uh, in Hyde Park, near the Milton border. Uh, this is very typical to the neighborhood in that area, smaller single family homes, all single family homes in that area. Speed lights. Uh, we ha actually, we need to coordinate that uh, with the lighting department. Uh, we actually had an initial meeting with BRA or BBPA. Uh, I, I guess sometimes these small streets lights are, are not, uh, sometimes they're not favorable just due to light pollution out there. Uh, but I imagine we want to see. Be safe. For safety. Yeah. So if it is a public street, it needs to be lit. Yeah. Otherwise, it could be awkward for both you and I and those who are going to buy into that area. Otherwise, they will ask us. Okay. So do work with the Public Works Department, Street Light Division folks, to make sure that the lighting design which your team comes up with has been approved by the cities. Okay. Okay. Those we, lights also need to appear on this plan. We yes. can't vote without okay. seeing the lighting as well as all of the water and sewer. Water and sewer utilities because of it. So, I'm very excited about a project of this nature, yeah. but the homeowners may require gas connections, obviously electricity is there, so you need to sh sh make sure that the investment you are making is not going to be compromised yes. later onwards, right? Yeah. Because once you give the street to us, it becomes the city's, and then we don't care for that street to be cut up, because then it becomes our headache. Uh. Okay, so we actually have done some initial, uh, we had an initial submission to Boston Water Sewer uh, in coordination with Boston Public Works regarding water sewer and drainage. So that that work, that we have gone through that coordination <coughs> with them. Uh, I guess it was unclear to me whether you actually want the water and sewer shown on the PIC plan or would that be on a Boston Water Sewer Commission plan? It was both. both. Um, yeah, so the, what we're approving here for the water and sewer plans, like we need to understand that you're not just draining all your water in the building. Yep. Um, and because you all drain down that street, um, yep. and where are those structures are, where the water and sewer pipes are okay. going to be, um, this is going to be the plan of record. This is going to be what's in plan of record. So uh, we want all the utilities, if you know where they are, to appear on these plans. Um, and the street lights and the catch basins and the water and sewer lines are okay. Yeah. So is this submitted to BWC as a site plan? Yes, it was submitted as a, we actually have a site plan number. Okay. Uh, there's, uh, there was some initial uh, review. We were sent to uh, Public Works to coordinate with uh, Dan Egan regarding the stormwater design, so we did that. We went back with that coordination. Uh, I think it was Steve Shea that said, okay, we're, we're okay to move to PIC. They feel comfortable with the design as is, but we do need to go back and finalize and get, uh, get the approval of the site plan. So it's, you have got approval yet, but it's in the process. Yeah, it's in process yeah. and we have a site plan number. And what is the purpose of the, of the, the bump out in the road? Is, is that, it's, that bump out is for, uh, that should be a hammer in, in lieu of a, a larger pelvis, you know, a large turnaround for emergency vehicles, uh, you provide a hammer, it's a hammerhead provided for the turning around of a ladder truck. Okay, so that you just didn't have the room for a couple sacks so. Yeah, and it's small, it's a small neighborhood, you know, small road like that. I think with BBDA, they said you could do either hammerhead or uh, turnaround. Could you also do the following and seek this uh, Cording's guidance? Because this is in the Fairmont Hill neighborhood of Hyde Park. Yeah. It will be quite uh, desirable for this commission to have the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services person be here at the public hearing to testify 
that the immediate neighbors within the Fairmont Hill Neighborhood Association are agreeable to what is being proposed here. I'm fairly certain that you have had community meetings within the Neighborhood Association and seek their guidance, or am I, how would you, how would you respond to that, rather than me putting words in your? We, uh, uh, George Morantz in the, uh, the attorney for the project, um, the meetings that we've had with the BPDA uh, included from the outset uh, ONS, uh, David McNulty at the time was the coordinator. Uh, so we had a coordinator closely with David and following the guidance of ONS in terms of what they wanted to do in terms of any attended public process in the community uh, as part of this process. I will uh, follow up, and it's now um, uh, uh, Brian Adams, I believe, uh, uh, is, is the same coordinator. I will follow up with Brian after today's hearing, prior to uh, the public hearing, uh, and make sure that we're coordinated with ONS. Basically, what we need is someone from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services to add testimony yes. to this commission, stating that the community is supportive of this effort which you are asking us to vote on. It is difficult for us to vote on something if we know that the whole neighborhood is of a different mindset that makes it a bit awkward for us. Yes, that, that's understood. And, and again, I will follow up. I think I know right now. Right. Uh, I'll follow up. Could you please? Can you touch briefly on uh, the choice you made around the, uh, such the, the curb radius uh, at the entrance from Milton uh, Ave uh, to this new road and why it doesn't necessarily reflect what is at the opposite side of uh, Milton Ave? As far as to, 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 it was just easier for, for access of emergency vehicles. Um, you know, we can, so we the, the road is 26 feet wide, so right. if we wanted to, if, if Commissioners would like us to tighten up the match the neighborhood, we can do that. Okay. So this is not arbitrary or capricious public works. This, we have designed standards for yep. 40 foot roadways as to what those radiuses are. Work with Ms. Cordick, so whether the engineering division can give you what those turning radiuses are. Uh, the, I will say that the turning radiuses of the surrounding streets aren't, they don't need them. So, so that's, this actually. So surrounding Got streets, yeah. when, high, when Boston annexed Hyde Park, Hyde Park had a different set of guidelines. This is one of the oldest neighborhoods. I dare say the existing turning radiuses in fair part of Fairmont Hill does not meet our current standards. Yes. But we have new standards for yes. new roadways, for 40 foot roadways. We can give you that information. Okay. So from the transportation perspective, I mean, it's a two-way street. It's not proposed to have any parking on street. It's all off street. Uh, there would, there, there's parking off street to be driveways. Right, but off nothing. Street, but we're not, uh, I don't think we'd be proposing to uh, to uh, prohibit parking on the street at, at 26, 26 feet wide unless the commission. We, we I think you got to look at it. I mean, a six foot parking lane for a two way street is, is some standard, so it would have to be restricted. Okay. Have if you done a warrant analysis for a stop sign? At uh, Milton Ave and uh, Proposed Street. Sorry, what was that? Warrant that? analysis for the stop sign coming out from the new street onto Milton Street. So we have it, uh, it's, it's, I mean, a site distance at the site that we can provide. Take that. a look at that. I mean, so we need like a signage marking plan. Yep. Probably want to have a crosswalk from a ramp to the other ramp. Um, one item that we I think we need to do here is uh, we'd have, we'll also add, I noticed after the submission <coughs> that sidewalk ends at the property line. There's a concrete sidewalk that ends there. Uh, so we should, we should we'll extend the sidewalk to me to, to our street. And initially, you know, with the, the cul-de-sac and the hammerhead that you know, I mean, historically it's been a nightmare with, you know, people that think they actually own it. You know, so one resident will complain about the other one because he's parking his vehicles in that area that's supposed to be reserved for a turnaround. So we want to clearly sign what's permitted out here. Do you have your subdivision plans right now that can show us where the individual houses and the driveways are going to be? Do you have that information? We have, we've actually designed a lot. We, Perfect. Or, or, so but we, have, we, we need the road before we can uh, Right, but if you can overlay that information
information so we can get some <coughs> understanding as to the width of the driveways, the <coughs> depth of the driveways, so that commission members can make an evaluation where if you have six single family houses, roughly what that will translate to in the number of cars that might be parking and so forth. Okay. So you're, you're proposing to build this roadway prior to construction of the buildings? Yeah, yeah. The, the road will be built. That's going to be a problem. I, I mean, Amy, we, we know we've had this happen in Bartlett Station over in Lansbury, where they built the roadway and sidewalks, now they're ripping it up because they're putting the new utilities in and the services. Oh, uh, yeah, the utilities, would you, as far as the roadway, all utilities see electric, uh, electric gas, all the utilities and easements would be in place, the driveway curb cuts uh, for the buildings would be in place. We have, we have a layout of where the building, what makes sense for which side the garage should be on, hence where the curb cut should be. But I'm, I'm talking about the construction manor plan. Basically, you're building this roadway and sidewalks, even if you've got your utilities in, basically the crane work that's required, basically material deliveries to get on site, etc. I mean, you've got to take that into consideration before. Ideally, what we like to see is the street gets built for public work standards. It remains a private street until all work is done. We will not accept this accept roadway the until the houses, houses are Houses have been okay. built. Right. That is how we normally like to see yeah. things. So to facilitate that, who is responsible for building the houses? Is it okay. you? No, the company. I mean, who? Company. When I say you, is it your team? That yes. Okay, Co great. Cohane Company is responsible. I'm sorry? Cohane Company is responsible for building. Are they, I don't know who they are, are they you? Or are they part of your team? Yes, Dennis Cohane is the owner of Cohane Company. He couldn't be Wonderful. Okay, so it is your team that is responsible for building the road, building the houses, and selling them. Yes. Okay. So it doesn't matter to us if the houses are sold or not. We just want to make sure that the houses are built. Sure. So that way the area is stable. At which point you can come and petition the commission to accept the street. So it can be laid out and built as a public street, which allows you the option of coming. Maybe that's. Take the street without yes. but I, I, you. Know, ideally, I'd like to see the, the, the structures built and then you build yes. the roadway. Uh, yeah, typically with subdivisions, smaller subdivisions, you come in, you, you get your infrastructure in, you, you start building your homes, you sell the homes. They move along and sell the homes, and then when the homes are complete, you come in and put your top force on. This is the way I've seen it typically done in other communities. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I was going to say. Is I've, I've had success in the past putting the binder course down yeah. and actually constructing the sidewalks, but leaving the driveway curb cuts unconstructed. Yeah. And then after the contractors are done building the homes, then put the concrete driveway aprons down and then and the uh, binder course. Yeah, so, so, you yeah, up, the so you can butt up to it. It yeah. just protects your investment or some, right. don't care about something that was nicely done, so keep it manageable. Sure. So before you give it to us, clean everything up nicely. Yeah. Okay. Has uh, the ISD permits and the new street numbers been issued yet? No. And as uh, Todd had pointed out to me this morning, have you had any input or any discussions with the fire department regarding the turning radius and location of the, uh, the hammerhead? Uh, there was initial coordination with BPDA. Uh, we need confirmation area. from the fire. City of Boston Fire Department, yes. uh, not BPDA, because yeah. it's, it's their uh, turning radius that we're trying to yeah. Right, BPDA is not in the business of building roads or approving them. That's this exactly. body here. So you get direction from the Fire Department, Transportation Department, Public Works, Water and Sewer, ISD. So then your consultants decide this are the J. Grandes, right, DCI, design yeah. consultants. Yeah. They are extremely qualified. The consultants who put these plans together, they're extremely qualified to answer all these questions. So just impress upon them to seek the necessary answers to the questions that are being asked. Other questions or comments? Amir Todd. No, we'll come up with a compiled list Thank of you. their yeah. outstanding issues and Maybe it's tweeting with the two weeks is enough for them to sort things out because I have a concern about the, then again, they may be eager to get to. Yeah, I mean, if everybody comes back and says this is what they want, then two weeks is enough. Okay, if they need to start making modifications, we're probably looking at four. So, I'm choice. just being mindful of the holiday season. Some people tend to be. Exactly. Not holiday. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. 
probably need to hold together. Right. Two, two meetings, I would say, yeah. this coordination. Yeah, so That's four weeks. Right. We'll see you guys on September 21st. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. The next item is 29 Perkins Street at Day Street, Roxbury, the widening and relocation on a petition by the Massachusetts Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Don't be shy. <laughs> Uh, Joe Fleury, Boston Public Works. Joe Silva, MSPCA. We're here, we're here today on behalf of MSPCA to do a widening and relocation of Perkins uh, Street. And I have a photo for you to show you what we're trying to do. In this intersection of Perkins and Day, we close with a six foot high wall. Um, so the intent here is to do a widening relocation to allow for that wall to be constructed. So it's only eight but also it provides some land area for the future arts and Joe, if you can add a little bit context information as to its connections to the Heights Square project. Sure. Uh, Boston Public Works uh, is currently uh, about to construct uh, the Hyde Square uh, project, which is basically uh, reconstructing that entire uh, circle there, bringing up the current standards uh, viewed by the area. Um, and as part of that, we've carved out part of the budget for public art. Um, and this little cutout by the MSPCA wall um, is going to house some of that art. Um, that'll come as a separate PIC. Uh, and we are very appreciative for the MSPCA to participate with this effort. Truly appreciative. So we thank you for partnering with the city and the neighborhood to make Hyde Square even better than what we thought. Yeah, thank you. It's been pretty easy, actually. It's <laughs> Right there. So does the curb line and the sidewalk remain the same and then we just widen the, the right of way in this kind of the, arc? The curb's changing as part of the larger Hyde Square project. Um, this is only for that little half circle um, behind so the wall there. Public right of That's going to be public right of way and then we're going to put public art, art in yeah. that, that right of way. Excellent. And I should know this, Joe, but uh, are we far enough along in the art selection process and design process to know this is sort of the right dimensions for what's going to come there? Uh, it should be more than enough. Perfect. The dog or the cat? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting for your submission. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do have an artist on board. They don't have a final design yet. And like I said, that'll come with the separate uh, PIC okay. process. Great. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. I'd say 10 times. Amir Todd. Definitely not. All right. Two weeks, enough time? Perfect. All right, we'll see you guys on the 7th. Thanks. Our final item of new business is West Adams Street at 380 Shamut Avenue, Boston proper. Specific repairs on a petition by the Boston Public Schools. Good morning, John. What is the opening going to be now? The opening now will be about 38 feet. So just to say back, this essentially will allow easier bus operations for students who are going to the Blackstone to be able to go to get off of West Edom and into the drop-off area for the Blackstone School. Go on. Peter Cross, when you guys you looked at this, he's a little bit Yeah, Peter and, and Julio Chow from my staff. 
That's good. Thank you for clarifying, because I couldn't figure out why we were going to PIC with this. Yep. That's what we're yeah, just, just a big driveway. Got it. Thank you. We tried to keep it away from here, but. Uh, yeah, if it wasn't on the angle, it I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved.